Hi, thanks for joining me in this Intro to Seaborne series. My name is Kimberly Fessel, and today we'll be talking about the Seaborne scatter plot. You're probably already familiar with the scatter plot basics. For each data point in your data set, you just want to create a circular dot to represent that point. So here's the value at 1, 1, or this value at 2, 3. You'll continue doing this for each point in your data set until eventually, once every data point has a circular dot, your scatter plot is formed. The scatter plot is considered a relational plot, so what we're really interested in is the relationship between our two different variables. Perhaps when we build our scatter plot, we'll see a positive trend, which would indicate that larger values of one variable are associated with larger values of the other variable. Or maybe we'll see just the opposite in a negative trend. Let's learn how to build one of these simple scatter plots using Seaborne code. So in order to demo the Seaborne code, I'm going to start by importing the Seaborne library as well as the PyPlot module, and I'm going to alias both of those. Then I'll load in some data from the Seaborne library itself, and these data are about diamonds. So each observation in this data frame is about one specific diamond, and so we have things like carat, cut, color, as well as the price of each diamond. I'm going to do a little bit more filtering just to make some cleaner visuals for you. So I'm only looking at here diamonds that are either premium or good, and diamonds that have color D, F, or J. And that's really just to create some nice visuals. I'm also sampling down to only 100 observations, but of course you could have more observations than that. So I'm also going to set my Seaborn style to be dark, and now we're ready to create our first scatter plot. In order to do that, we just reference the Seaborn library and then tell Seaborn that we'd like to make a scatter plot. Now I'm just passing in whatever values I would like for my x. Let's start off with the carats of each of these diamonds. And whatever values I would like for my y. So here I'm going to do the price. So now we have our Seaborn scatter plot. And you'll see that Seaborn has interpreted the first pandas series, the caret, as my x values, and the second pandas series as my y values, the price. There is another way that you could do this syntax. So here I've passed in two separate panda series, but you could potentially pass in the entire data frame and just reference the column names. So let's try that as well. So in this case, I will pass the caret to my x value and the price to my y. And now I'm just passing the entire data frame to my data argument. And so this will produce the exact same plot. So we certainly see some relationship between these variables here. Um, we see that as someone increases the, the carrot of the diamond, you will also see an increase in price, and that's to be expected. Just to show you what other scatter plots might look like, let's try one more. And in this one, I'm going to reference the x and y dimensions of the diamond themselves. So. There is an x measurement as well as a y measurement for each diamond, so let's take a look at that. And in this case, you'll see a really strong relationship between x and y. But what if you have additional information you would like to convey through your scatter plot? For example, an extra category or an extra continuous variable. Seaborn allows you the option of three extra semantic variables in order to convey additional information. For example, let's say that our data come from two different categories. We could change the hue in order to express those categories through color, or the style of our markers, or perhaps the size of our markers. Here's some Seaborn code to allow you to do just that. So let's dive in further and take a look at each of those semantic variables, and we'll start with the hue property. So this code right here is what I was showing you earlier if I'm trying to see how caret influences price. But if I also want to convey extra meaning through the color of each of these dots, I could set the hue property to be yet another column in my data frame. For example, the cut column. Now you'll see that premium cut diamonds are in blue and good cut diamonds are in orange. So we might be able to see how cut influences price as well. 
If these colors are not to your liking, you can absolutely change the color of these points. And to do that, you'll want to reference the palette option. And here I'm just passing a list of the colors that I would like to use. And there's loads and loads of different color options for you. For example, you could say purple, or you can pass in your own hex code. All right, and these have now mapped to those two different categories. I have purple for the premium and aqua for the good. But you don't have to just use categorical values in order to leverage this uh, hue property. You can also use continuous variables. So let's try to also look at the depth percentage for each diamond. So depth is actually a continuous variable. Um, it's numeric. But what we're doing now is actually mapping that continuous variable onto a palette. So the lighter colors here are the um, smaller percentages of depth, and the darker colors are the larger percentages of depth. And we actually have mapped the entire continuous range onto this palette. So one other thing to tell you about that I'm going to be leveraging here a little bit is this S property. If you've played around with Matplotlib before, you know that S just controls the size of those dots. So same thing here, S will actually increase or decrease the size of your dots. But now instead of looking at the color property, let's actually switch over and look at style. So I'm passing the same uh, cut property to the style, but what we're going to do now, instead of changing the color for the different categories of cut, we actually change the type of marker used. So we have circles for premium and these little X's for good. The third and final semantic variable at your disposal for these scatter plots is size. So here I'm going to now set my size to be cut, and we'll see that what this does is makes the size of the circle different. So really small circles now mapping to the good uh, type of cut, and then the larger circles for the premium. I would say of the three, the size is probably the hardest for the human eye to see. It's a little bit easier to discern the color or the marker instead. You can even also um, tell Seaborn exactly which sizes you would like to use, and you do that through this sizes argument. So here it's just the same as when you pass in um, colors to the palette option. You just need to provide a list of all the different size dots uh, that you would like to use. And size is another one that you could actually use a continuous variable for if you'd like. So if you don't have categories and you actually want to use um, a continuous variable, you can absolutely do that. But you'll see that you are just mapping now smaller um, amounts of depth, get smaller circles, and then larger amounts of depth to the larger circles. And you might be thinking, hey, can I actually combine all of these different options? Absolutely, you definitely can. So here's an example where I've already applied um, the cut to the hue property. So we already see blue for premium diamonds and orange for good. In addition to this, I could also uh, say that the style should also match that cut property. And now not only will you see a different color for each of those two uh, types of cuts, you will also see that the marker has changed. This can be incredibly effective if you are really trying to emphasize the difference between two classes. If you want to actually convey additional information through the different semantic variables, you can do that as well. For example, we will have the hue will match the cut. We could also say that we want to display the color of each diamond through the style. So either premium or good for blue or orange, but the actual marker that's being used matches the color of the diamond, either F, D, or J. So this is a way to convey lots of additional information to your audience, but definitely be careful. This is already kind of merging on um, possibly too much information if you are giving a presentation. This might be appropriate if you are instead handing out visuals to someone and letting them have a lot of time to digest all the different, different information. And you have even more options. Here's some additional code to help you style those markers. We have already talked about how you could potentially increase the size of those dots by increasing this S parameter. But now what happens is that a lot of those dots are overlapping each other, and so what you might want to do is make those dots transparent. And you can do that through this alpha property. 
So alpha ranges from zero, which is totally invisible, up to one, which is completely solid. So let's put that somewhere in the middle at about 0.6. You'll see I've added some transparency to the dots and you can start to um, see where they overlap based on the color intensity of the dots. So Seaborn is nice because it inherits from the matplotlib scatter plot. So if you know about that, you can also change the type of marker you are using for each dot with this marker option. And now we've switched to using stars. The default here is to outline each star with a little white line. You could actually change that edge color through a property called edge color. And you can just change that to whatever color you would like. So just take a look at the matplotlib documentation. You'll see there's lots and lots of different options for styling those markers themselves. The scatter plot is a fundamental visual that you will likely use many, many times. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to build one using Seaborn. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.